Hey, welcome back to the big boy. So, I was thinking about the, uh, the, the next turn uh, that we have here. So, a couple of things going on. The Romans have had a couple of rounds of fairly aggressive combat. At one point, we actually had nine individual uh, malaise uh, shock attacks occurring which is a fairly substantial amount right across the line. And as you can see, we made a small hole here and we have uh, you know, done a little bit of damage. The Greeks returned the favor and really put uh, some serious hurt on the Romans. A lot of these units here have four hits, three hits, cohesion hits. There's three here, two here. So, We've gone through a, a couple of rounds, and if you watched the last video, I believe we ended up over here on the right-hand side of the board, and the, uh, here, sorry, the cavalry had attacked the Triarii and started to peck away at that formation. So it doesn't look good for the Romans at this point, far as I can tell. I'm a fairly optimistic guy sometimes. Some people call me a cynic, but it's not looking good. Now. What I've done is I rolled for continuation. Remember that we're using the infidel activation rule to see if they can be applied to uh, the simple great battles of history rules. And as I'm going along, I'm looking for abnormalities and things like that. And I'm really not seeing so much with this game in any case. Pretty much everybody's getting a shot at moving, the only complication comes with the Romans with the multiple formation moves based on the various rules for simple great battles of history without getting into it too deeply. So what I, I went ahead and calculated the DRMs and the, uh, did the rolls for the various attacks and then also I've got the, the results here. So we can go through those and I thought it might be fun to go through this specific combat and have me talk through it as opposed to uh, do diagrams and things like that on the on the board so uh, these are the current hit levels for the various units that are taken the co cohesion hits that have been taken so let's, let's go through those now down here we have the hippocysts had I believe that's how you pronounce that hippocysts had uh, three attacks one two three and their results, they had flank weapon systems benefits. They have a TQ or troop quality benefit of at least three on uh, one on this one and actually zero on this one. So not, not so much there. No movement bonus, but very significant cohesion point benefits. Plus three there, etc. And, and the rolls were kind of ugly. I uh, rolled at, at, I believe at eight. So it was an eight, a three, and a four here and all of those added up to uh, routes so this guy routes this guy routes this guy routes so let's just put those over to the side for the moment because we'll need to tally up points in a second and we need to do our advance after combat I'll take the shock markers away I also included uh, these two four together, uh, so that was kind of neat. You've got to choose your weapon system sometimes. Now here, Craterus had a die roll of a seven and a plus two for size. That was it. He rolled a nine. Unfortunately, the Roman unit roll a nine also for its route check. They have a seven TQ troop quality, so they also route and they advance. And our last attack here, second last attack here, is only a plus, oh, it's a plus three because we have cohesion hit delta and a size delta of just one because there's actually six points here of size and so that was a plus three we rolled a five that's an eight unfortunately they rolled a nine again 
for the TQ check, so they are also dead. I can all in here somehow. He got discounted. It's this guy here. It's actually Paulus is representing our uh, our leader since we don't have a, the correct leader counter for that battle. Paulus did not die, but he does go off the field, or uh, he either goes off the field or he moves to another formation, I forget, so. Uh, and this uh, light infantry of Velite's unit also dies. I'm here, so I can advance to here. Now this does cause some problems, because we are uh, actually moving well past the Roman line, and it would be very easy for them to flank attack us. Attack us. So we are in a little bit of a pickle here, and it could very well become very ugly. However, if we add up all of that there, I believe last time I checked it was 48 points. And we are currently at 134. And 48 plus 34, as far as I know, is more than 175. Is more than 75. So the game is officially over, and I uh, get this one here oh I didn't do this one so okay well let's just run through this one real quick here so the game like I said the game is officially over anyway that's two two phalanxes are taking this one and I didn't roll or do anything for this so they've got <laughs> let's just do it real quick we have a weapon system of zero we have a TQ Delta of one there's uh, the Greeks is seven the Romans are six so that's plus one for them <coughs> we have uh, seven cohesion hits on these guys and four on these guys so that means that's a plus three and we have a size delta of plus one uh, no 20 to six so that's plus two no movement no leader no leader no leader that's a plus six to the drm we roll the six that's a 12 those two guys now there is a rule for uh routing with uh, a stack that's different. The top guy definitely goes. And we may have to check one of these other guys that was uh, fighting earlier on too. And this guy, I believe his TQ becomes, his troop quality becomes, at six it becomes five and he retreats. That's what happens there. He retreats. And I can advance one of those and I believe I will advance, where was he? He was here. I'll advance this guy to here. All right. Now that's actually going to protect me here because I, if I turn and try and do a flank attack, I can't get any benefit of that from that flank attack because I am exposing my rear to the enemy. <coughs> uh, so, so now it's over 48 points. In fact, we have 48 plus 6. That is going to be 54 additional points. What did I say we're at? 134 and 54. So that's 188. So these guys are at 188 and these guys are at 14 or 10 or something like that. 10, I think. So game's over. Just for the, the hell of it, I thought, you know, let's see our roll for continuation. And we were going to cycle uh, either back to uh, the companions uh, with Al Alexander and let Alexander run or Leonidas. Leonidas has a leadership of three. I have to add two. Uh, roll one so he would have got to play we would have been able to move all of our cavalry over here eight hexes and that would have put us in pretty good shape to do some rear attacking on these guys and potentially uh, start hitting the, the other flank of the triario so that would have been one two three four five six seven eight to here roughly two three four five six seven eight to here one to, and we can attack we could have attacked here perhaps and done a flank attack so I think the battle's well and truly done when we look at the battlefield in total the Romans had to dissipate their forward momentum to try and protect their flank here over here meant that you know they got themselves in a little bit of trouble here then the cavalry over here activated and just crushed the Roman cavalry got great rolls they barreled right through. Once again, I had to pull troops away uh, from any attacking here and attempting to flank this way. 
and uh, the rest is history as they say. So Alexander would have uh, eaten these guys lunch in a very short period of time I believe. In fact it would have been nothing more than a mere snack. Losses one phalanx. So if we were to play the next scenario we would uh, we would start the, uh, the conflict with a full full deck of units which would be very interesting. And I wasn't going to, but you know, maybe I will. It looks kind of interesting. All right, so that's it. The Battle of Cirrus, the one uh, where we were wondering where Ale where in the world Alex was. Well, there he is.